Okay, welcome back to Unit 2.2 Part 2. Uh, sorry about that pen disaster nonsense I was having in the last video. So I went ahead and started what I was writing right here. So when we're talking about real zeros, so if I ever ask you how many real zeros does this, pos this uh, polynomial have, then you're going to tell me that whatever n equals. When you talk about turning points, you're going to tell me n minus 1. But what's that phrase that I wrote here that is so important for us? That phrase is at most. So yes... You know, yes, it's n, and yes, it's n minus 1, but it's at most those values. So that's not a guarantee. So right over here, we have n equals 6, right? So that means, and this is the same exact uh, example from before, that tells me if n equals 6, then it's uh, lead, or sorry, what am I trying to say? It's distinct real zeros would be 6, and its turning points would be 5. But again, it's not just 6 and 5, it's at most. It's a possible number of six real zeros and a possible number of five turning points, but that's the most it could have. It's not a guarantee it will have those values. Um, but the reality is I plugged it into a graph and I showed it to you here. The reality is that this function probably has three real zeros. I see a connection point right here, a connection point and right here, a connection point right here, and three turning points. Boom, there's a turning point. Boom, there's a turning point. And boom, there's a turning point. Okay. Um, that's really all we're going to talk about with turning points. So if I ask you a question in the future about how many turning points a function has, you tell me, uh, not turning points, if I ask you how many questions are distinct zero, you tell me n. If I ask you how many turning points, you tell me n minus 1. And n is simply the greatest exponent in your polynomial, the largest, uh, the largest power. The other thing we have to kind of briefly talk about is how to solve for zeros of polynomials. In a couple lessons from now, we're going to learn how to use synthetic division to do uh, zeros of polynomials, but we have to learn how to do synthetic division first, and we're not there yet. So we actually have a method for solving zeros right now that you guys did in Algebra 2, at least. You might have uh, looked at it in Algebra 1. And what we did there is we simply factored, set it equal to zero, and solved for those roots, okay? So um, that's that's the number one method we're going to talk about today. There are a couple other methods that we could use. We could always use that quadratic equation, you know, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a or something like that. I don't remember. So there's the quadratic equation. We also have something called u substitution. And finally, synthetic and long division, which is what we are moving towards. That's our end goal. We want to get to that. And of course, finally, you can graph it and just figure out where those zeros are. Like I told you today, we're simply focusing on factoring. Okay, so if we have this function, x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x, we can factor that out. The first thing I'm going to notice is that there's an x in every term. That means I can first, uh, I got some examples listed out for me. Whoa. Ah, so my apologies. Let's pause and predict. How many real zeros? How many turning points? So what's my n value? That's my largest number, right? So that tells me for this question, n equals 3. So that means my real zeros at most, right? At most, I have three real zeros. My turning points at most, not a real, ooh, not a real numbers, at most is n minus 2. So 3 minus, sorry, n minus 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay, so at most, I have three real zeros. At most, I have two turning points. And... So here's that question again. So now what we want to do is we want to we want to actually instead of predicting, we want to actually solve those real zeros. So what I already told you is that we're going to take out one of these fives and we're going to set it equal to zero. So we set it equal to zero and we factored out the x's. I think I just misspoke and said I take out a five. I'm sorry, I was looking at the five. We take out an x. We take out that x. Now I can ignore that x for a moment. I can literally just cover it up and ignore that x on the outside. And I can focus on factoring the inside. So that's what I did. I found factors of six uh, that would get me to negative five. So negative two times negative three gets me positive six. Negative 2x plus negative 3x gets me negative 5. So that is correct. Then I set each section equal to 0. My number or my stuff on the outside, that is a variable. So I still have to set that equal to 0. But that's my easiest one. If I simply take x and set it equal to 0, I already know that number. That's literally 0. So there's that very first one. Then I took the second se second set, second factor term, and I set it equal to 0. x minus 2 equals 0. And the third one, x minus 3 equals 0. And then you just solve. So that becomes positive 2, positive 3, and 0. So that was 3 real zeros, not an estimate anymore because I have now done that solve. I've already figured that out. 
Here's another one. Here's another example. So what are our real zeros and our turning points? Well, we've got to find that n value, right? So what is our largest exponent? It's this number right here. So that tells me n equals 3. So if I'm looking at my real zeros, and sometimes this pen is real nice, sometimes it's not. If I'm looking at my real zeros, that's n. So that is 3 real at most three real zeros, right? And then at most, my turning points are going to be n minus one. So that's again two. So we have a similar kind of problem here. We do the exact same thing. Okay. Ooh, you do the exact same thing and you factor it out and you set it equal to zero and you solve. And then you can identify how many real zeros you have. We have a predicted amount of three, but how many do you actually have? Okay, here's one more example for you. Again, I hope you're pausing to do these examples. So our n value is four. We have a possible four real zeros. We have a possible uh, three turning points. Okay, and that's really all we talked about today. So again, polynomials, can you predict its end behavior? Write it in limit notation. Can you, that's the leading term test. Can you do, uh, can you figure out how many real zeros and turning points predicted are? Then can you factor and actually uh, calculate the actual zeros? That's all we did today. Thank you so much and I'll see you for video 2.3.